Hello from PCC Library. In this video, we'll discuss Chicago style citations, particularly using the Notes in Bibliography or NB system. By the end of this video, we will learn why citations are used, what the Notes in Bibliography or NB system of Chicago style means, how to create footnotes using Chicago Manual Style 17th edition, and how to create bibliography entries using, again, Chicago 17th edition. All right, let's start with why are citations used? Citations are used because, first, citations give credit to the original author. In other words, citing your sources means that you're attributing existing research to its creator, and it helps in avoiding plagiarism. Another reason is that citations allow readers to look up the source on their own. For example, if you write a research paper with citations provided, then that means someone else reading your paper has enough information to look up those resources on their own. Okay, so let's talk about what notes in bibliography style means. So Chicago style has two variations to it, one of which is called the notes in bibliography system, which is commonly referred to as NB for short. And it basically works just like it sounds where there are numbered notes used throughout your paper, and there are citations at the end of your paper in a bibliography. So that's how it gets its name. There are notes and a bibliography in your paper. Now, the notes themselves can be either footnotes, which are when the notes are found at the end of each page, or they can be endnotes, which are when the notes are found at the end of the paper as a whole. For this video, we'll use footnotes. All right, let's jump in with creating footnotes. Okay, so the overall idea is that for each quote or idea you borrow and that you've added to your paper, you will make a note in your paper in order to cite your source. To do this, you will need to use a superscript, meaning above the line number within the text. This is placed at the end of the clause or sentence after any punctuation. Each superscript number also gets a corresponding number at the bottom of the page. This is the note. The number at the bottom of the page is full-sized and followed by a period. And finally, notes are added in numerical order, beginning with one. Let's take a look at a sample paper. Okay, this is an excerpt from a paper written in Chicago style using the NB system. And here's how notes work. In this first sentence, for example, the author has borrowed a quote from an outside source, so at the end of that quote is the number one. The number is superscript, which again means it sits slightly higher than the rest of the text. And the way this works is, this number one in the text corresponds to a note numbered one to match here at the bottom. These are the footnotes right here. And here's another note number. This is the number two. And here's its corresponding footnote. And here's note number three. And here's its corresponding footnote, and so on. Okay, now footnotes have a specific format that they follow. And I've included the Chicago note format for a journal article here at the top. As you can see, it's got the number of the note, which is followed by various pieces of data about the article. So things like author's first name, last name, name of the article, name of the journal, volume number, issue number, year, pages, and the DOI or the database name if applicable. Also notice the punctuation between elements, so things like commas and quotation marks. And also notice when something is italicized, which means when the font leans to the side. And here's an example based on an actual journal article, so you can see what this looks like with the pieces plugged in including punctuation and italics where applicable. So let's take a look at that sample paper again. And if we look at this first footnote here, which again corresponds to this number one right here, we'll see that it follows the format from the previous slide. It's got the number one and a period, and then it's followed by first name, last name, name of the article, name of the journal, volume number, issue number, year, page, and in this case, it has a DOI for this article. Now here are a couple things to keep in mind. The first time a source is cited, you will need to provide a full citation for the item. 
meaning what we've just covered a moment ago with the first name, last name, article title, journal name, etc. But sometimes we find ourselves quoting from the same source more than once. And in cases like this, when you have subsequent citations from the same source, you should use a shortened version of the footnote, which only includes the author's last name, a shortened form of the title, sometimes about one to four words, and leaving out initial words like the, a, or an, and the page number. And here's an example based on an actual journal article. So as you can see, the first footnote, number number one, is the full citation, which we covered in the previous slide. But this following footnote, number two, is a shortened version of the note. And so it only includes the author's last name, a shortened version of the title, in this case, shortened down to one word, and the page number. And let's take a look at that sample paper again. So let's say we borrow a quote from this article by Peter LaSalle. And so I've got my footnote right here. And let's say my next quote in my paper is from this article by Miriam Schoenfield. So I've got a footnote right here for them right here. Now let's say my third quote in my paper, so number three, is from LaSalle again. So what I've got in my footnote is the shortened version of the note, where it only has the author last name, the shortened version of the title, in this case I shortened it to just conundrum, and the page number, so page 100. And to take this idea even further, if you find yourself using the source even more times, there's an even shorter version of the footnote to use. For example, the first time you cite the source, again, it gets the full version of the footnote with the full name, article title, journal title, volume issue, and so on. The second time you cite the source, again, use a shortened version with just the last name, shortened title, and page number. Now, if you happen to use the source again, then you use just the last name and the page number, like shown in these footnotes numbered one through three and four here. So let's take a look at that sample paper again, for example. Okay, so again, I borrowed a quote from this article by Peter LaSalle, and so I've got my first footnote right here. And my next quote in my paper is from this article by Miriam Schoenfield, so I've got a footnote for them right here. And my third quote in my paper is from LaSalle again, so I've got my shortened version of the note, which just has the author last name, shortened version of the title, and a page number. Now, let's say I borrow a quote from LaSalle once more. So, I've got an even shorter version of the footnote, where it has just the author last name and the page number. Okay, now the examples shown thus far have been based on journal articles, but if you'd like to find more examples, the official website from the Chicago Manual of Style has many to browse through. For example, the site has many examples of full-length notes as well as short notes. The site also has sample notes based on other source types, so things like books, ebooks, news articles, and more. And the site has sample notes based on sources with different numbers of authors. So if you'd like to see sample notes of an article with two authors, or let's say even a dozen authors, the Chicago Manual of Style website linked here has many examples. Okay, so we've reviewed creating notes. Now let's take a look at creating bibliography entries. Okay, now let's talk about the bibliography section of the paper. Remember that the bibliography is the last page of a paper. You will need to start a new page for the bibliography no matter where your paper ends. The page is titled Bibliography and it's centered at the top of the page. Citation and entries are listed in alphabetical order by first word, which is often an author's last name. And the overall idea here is that you will include a citation for all the sources cited in your paper. So let's take a look at a sample paper. So this is a bibliography from a sample paper. And as you can see, its title is Bibliography at the top, and this is centered on the page. This bibliography has four entries on it. And notice that they are listed in alphabetical order, top to bottom, based on the first word of the entry, which again is often an author's last name. So LA comes before LI, which comes before S, 
and SA comes before SC. And the general idea here is that any source you cited within your paper, meaning any source you used in a footnote, should have an entry in your bibliography. But unlike notes, in the bibliography, you only need to list each source one time, no matter how many times you reference them within your paper. Now the entries in the, in the bibliography have a slightly different format from the notes format. And I've included the Chicago bibliography entry format for a journal article here at the top. As you can see, it starts with the author's last name, followed by their first name, followed by the name of the article, the name of the journal, volume number, issue number, year, the full page range, and then the DOI or the database name if applicable. And again, notice the punctuation between elements, so things like commas, quotation marks, and also notice when something is italicized, which again is when the font leans to the side. At first glance, this format may look the same as the notes format, but it is in fact slightly different. Here is an example based on a journal article, so you can see what this looks like with pieces plugged in, including punctuation and italics where applicable. Now let's take a look at that sample bibliography again. And if we look at this first entry here, we'll see that it follows the format from the previous slide, where it's got the last name, followed by the first name, followed by the name of the article, name of the journal, volume number, issue number, year, full page range, and in this case, a DOI. Also notice the use of punctuation and italics. These follow the format shown in the previous slide as well. And if you review closely, each of these also follow the bibliography entry format as well. Okay, so again, the examples shown thus far have been based on journal articles. But again, if you'd like to find more examples, the official website from the Chicago Manual Style has many to browse through. For example, the site has many examples of bibliographic entries based on other source types, so things like books, ebooks, news articles, and more. And the site has sample entries based on sources with different numbers of authors. So if you'd like to see sample entries of articles with two authors or even a dozen authors, the Chicago Manual of Style website, linked right here, has many examples. All right, and lastly, remember that PCC Library is here to help. On the library homepage are helpful resources to help with your research, including the Citing Sources button, which has citation formats and sample citations for various styles. Also on the library homepage is the Ask a Librarian button, which takes users to all the different ways to get assistance from PCC Library, including chat, email, and even video conferencing. Thanks for watching.